In this lecture, we're going to discuss a concept known as the total internal reflection. So let's suppose that a single beam of light is traveling in water and eventually reaches the boundary between water and air as described in the following diagram. So let's suppose we have a certain light source, let's suppose a flashlight that creates a single ray of light that is traveling along the following pathway. Now eventually this ray of light will reach the boundary between water and air. Now because water and air have different indices of refraction, that basically means that our ray of light will bend. Because water has a higher index of refraction than air, that basically implies that the ray of light will bend away from the normal line that is drawn perpendicularly with respect to the surface of our water. So we want to ask the following question. What exactly is the highest possible value of the angle of refraction? So let's recall what the angle of incidence is and what the angle of refraction is. So we have our single ray of light that is traveling along the following pathway. Eventually it hits the surface of our water. That's the boundary between air and water. So at this particular moment, let's suppose we draw our normal line that is perpendicular with respect to the surface as drawn by the following dashed line. Now, the angle of incidence is defined as the angle that the incident ray or the incoming ray makes with respect to the normal line given by the following angle theta i. Now, this angle theta 1 is our angle of refraction. It's the angle that our refracted ray makes with respect to our normal line. So, theta 1 is the angle of refraction and theta i is the, is the angle of incidence. So, because water has a higher index of refraction than air, this basically means by Snell's law, our angle of incidence will be less than the angle of refraction, so our refracted ray will bend away from the normal line. So, notice what happens. So, as we increase our angle of incidence, we increase our angle of refraction. So, once again, as light travels into a medium with a lower index of refraction from water into air, the light ray bends away from the normal line as described in the following diagram. So, notice as we increase the angle of incidence, so if we increase theta i, we increase our angle of refraction. So, eventually, at a particular angle of incidence, the angle of refraction will be exactly 90 degrees. So, if we continue increasing the following angle of incidence, eventually, this angle will reach 90 degrees. The angle of refraction will be 90 degrees. And at this point, the refracted ray of light will travel directly along the surface of the water directly along the boundary line. Now, such an angle of incidence is known as the critical angle. So when the angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle, our refracted ray will travel along the surface of the boundary and our angle will be 90 degrees. Our angle of refraction will be 90 degrees. Now, how exactly can we calculate what the critical angle is for a particular set of index of refraction values? So, let's begin by applying Snell's Law. Snell's Law tells us the following. 
So the product of n1 and the sine of the angle of incidence is equal to n2 multiplied by the sine of the angle of refraction. So we're looking for the critical angle which is given by theta c where c stands for the critical. So let's rearrange and solve for sine of theta c. Sine of theta c is equal to n2 divided by n1 multiplied by sine of the angle of refraction. Now because by definition of the critical angle that basically means this theta angle must be 90 degrees. When this angle of refraction is 90 degrees that gives us the critical angle and sine of 90 is 1. So that means this disappears and the equation becomes sine of angle critical is equal to n2 divided by n1. Now notice what this quantity is. Because we're assuming that n1 is always greater than n2 for this particular case, this fraction will always be less than 1. So once again, for any n1 that is greater than n2, the critical angle is given by the following equation. So, if our n2 was greater than n1, then our ray of light would not bend away from the normal line, but would bend toward our normal line. So the critical angle only makes sense for the case when our ray of light is traveling from a medium where the index of refraction is greater into a medium where our index of refraction is less, as in this particular case. So, let's look at the following question. What happens if we increase the angle of incidence above the critical angle? So let's suppose we continue bending our light until we reach our critical angle. At this point, the refracted ray of light will travel directly along the boundary of our surface. But what happens if I continue increasing my angle of incidence? So in such a case, if we look at Snell's law, Snell's law essentially tells us that there would be no refracted ray of light and all of the light would essentially end up reflecting. And this phenomenon is known as the total internal reflection. So when when our angle of incidence is greater than the angle or the critical angle at that point all the light essentially reflects. Now the total internal reflection only works as long as n2 is less than n1. That is, our ray of light is traveling from a medium with a higher index of refraction into a medium with a lower index of refraction. So once again, if n1, if n1 is greater than n2 and the angle of incidence, the angle that the incoming ray makes with respect to our normal line is greater than the critical angle, then we get something known as the total internal reflection of light. That basically means all the light will reflect and pass along the following axis. So, notice the angle reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence as per uh, the law of reflection.